Skyrim is a great game, but after many hours of playing it, I've come to the realization that there are some things that Oblivion did a lot better. And while Skyrim has its improvements, it's really hard to overlook these issues. So here are the five things Oblivion did better than Skyrim. If you were to ask me what my favorite genre is, the answer would hands down be RPG. All of my favorite games fall somewhere in this category, but in Skyrim, the RPG aspects have pretty much disappeared. And while I definitely don't miss some of them, one that I really miss from Oblivion is the class system. And while you could argue that a lack of classes means that there's more freedom, I would argue that there really isn't. Now you're probably saying, that's absurd, because if you were playing as an archer and then decided you wanted to be a mage instead, you could just do that. And you can't in Oblivion, except you kinda can. And in Oblivion, you could probably do it easier. Because even if destruction is one of your minor skills, you can still get all the same perks that you would get if it were a major skill. And while increasing a minor skill won't affect your level at all, you'll still get points to put into your attributes every time you level up. While in Skyrim, if you spend a lot of perks in archery, all of a sudden you have a lot less perks to spend in magic. And now you may never be the best at either of them. Or at the very least, it's going to take a lot longer to level up to get those perks. Which means when you start a new game, you still have to decide what skills to focus on anyway. Now, I'm not saying Skyrim's perk system is bad, I'm just saying that not choosing a specific class doesn't make it any easier. If anything, it makes it more confusing. Now, of course, the Dragonborn DLC added a way to reset those perks, but you still have to do a lot of questing to get to that point. But really, that leads me into the real issue I have with no classes, which is the lack of identity. Who are you? No longer can you choose your backstory, now you have no backstory. As if you didn't even exist before you hit that start button. You can't even choose your own special birth sign anymore. Instead, they are now these dumb rocks giving you bonuses that you can swap in and out at a moment's notice. Only adding to my theory that the Dragonborn was never actually born. One of the common complaints I hear about Skyrim is it's not diverse enough. There are not enough Elves, not enough Argonians, not enough Bretons. And to some extent, that is true. And why should there be? This is the home of the Nords. There should be a lot of Nords. I mean, Morrowind was mostly Dark Elves, and that was fine. Cyrodiil had a lot of Imperials, and that was okay too. But the truth is, there's a lot more diversity in Skyrim than people give it credit for. The problem isn't that there are too many Nords, it's that no one can tell the difference. Here's a Nord, an Imperial, and a Breton. Can you tell the difference? Here's a Bosmer, an Altmer, and a Dark Elf. Do you know which one is which? I'm sure if you really thought about it, you could probably figure it out. But when you're just passing through, you probably won't realize what race they are. And at first, I thought it was just me, but lately, I've had multiple people tell me that they've never even seen a Bosmer in Skyrim. But you know what? I know that they have, since this guy in Whiterun is a Bosmer, his brother is a Bosmer, Feindel is a Bosmer, hell even that Almer girl I just showed you was actually a Bosmer, which was a big surprise to me. And that's my point. All these races look too similar. In Oblivion, I always knew who was a Bosmer because they were so short. When I saw a tall beefed up human, I knew it was a Nord. And if there was a tall golden elf, I could tell it was an Almer. I could even tell just by their voices. Okay. Guess who I am? Cainlon or Mainlon? I mean, sure, that was partly because Oblivion had so few voice actors, but Skyrim didn't improve that much. And instead, now I hear a voice and it could belong to anybody. And that only adds to the confusion I have as to who is who. And sure, you could argue that the Argonians and Khajiit look pretty distinct, but even they aren't as unique as they used to be. Back in Morrowind, their legs were totally different. I don't know what happened there. But that's a topic for another day. This isn't five things Morrowind did better. Skyrim takes itself way too seriously. I fight so that all the fighting I've already done hasn't been for nothing. I fight because I must. Alright, that's a bad example, but even moments that shouldn't be super serious are still too serious. Even when you meet Shea Gorath, which should be the very definition of not serious, is still unbelievably serious. I mean seriously. Even though there are some jokes thrown in during the quest, the things we are doing are not even that absurd. And on top of that, we are constantly reminded of the urgency of completing this quest. This isn't something we're doing for the fun of it, unlike Shea Gorath's quest in Oblivion. Instead, we are focused on trying to escape, and it takes away from the quest itself. And that's the problem I have with it. Skyrim seems to think that the world has to be at stake all the time. 
but it doesn't. And that is something Oblivion was aware of. It knew when to be serious and when not to be. If you're doing a quest for the God of Madness, then that should be a quest that is lighthearted and fun. And even when the quest you're doing is pretty serious, the game devs would still find a way to help lighten the mood. Ah, I was just getting used to being retired. You can see how good my painting is getting. And honestly, I find that makes Oblivion as a living world a lot more believable. In Skyrim, you are the greatest hero that ever was. You have powers almost no one has, and only you can save all of existence. And you know what? No one cares. No one gives you any respect, and no one actually acknowledges your power. It's stupid. In Oblivion, you aren't even the true hero. That title goes to Martin Septim. Sure, you did a lot to save the day, but he's the important one. But he turned into a dragon god, and that's hardly sporting. But despite that, everybody cares what you do. You walk around the streets and people go, It's... it's you. The hero of Kavach. This is truly an honor. And when you become a guildmaster, people will actually recognize that. Yes, master. You need me? I mean, hell, you even get your own statue. Which not only makes you feel more important, but it makes you feel like this is actually a world that you exist in. That everything you do has an effect on the events of the game. Even helping just one person can change how people interact with you. But in Skyrim, I don't get that feeling. Instead, I feel like anybody could have done this. And that when it is done, it didn't make any difference to the world whatsoever. Even when big things happen, such as becoming the Guildmaster of the Thieves Guild, people still treat you like the first day you walked in there. I don't care if you're best buddies with the Guildmaster. I'll still smash in your skull if you try anything. I am the Guildmaster, you prick. And while you might see some thieves running around in the wild now, they might as well have nothing to do with the guild, since they don't acknowledge you whatsoever. Which ultimately means I don't feel as connected to this world as I should be. And that's just sad. Alright, this last one shouldn't be a surprise to quite a few of you, because I've made it very clear in the past. Oblivion's quests are better. I am not saying that Skyrim doesn't have any good quests, but none of them compare to even the decent quests in Oblivion. As a matter of fact, Skyrim's bad quests aren't even as bad as Oblivion's bad quests. Which probably isn't a positive thing, but I'm using it anyway, because at least I remember them. In Skyrim, I can barely remember the good ones, and I've played Skyrim nearly as much as I've played Oblivion. Honestly, it just feels like Bethesda didn't really try that hard with Skyrim's quests. Most of them just kind of feel the same. Speaking of which, the quest lines themselves all follow the same basic structure. Especially the Dark Brotherhood and the Thieves Guild. If you put it on paper, they're practically carbon copies of each other. Oblivion, however, understood that variety is the spice of life. Every single guild quest line felt completely unique. Some guilds were doing badly at the start and then you help bring them back into prosperity, while other guilds were at their height of their power at the beginning and only spiraled into disarray as you went along. And that was great. And this variety extended to more than just the guilds, but to all the quests. Even the ones that had similar premises were still totally different. And that's what's missing from Skyrim. It doesn't matter that Skyrim's dungeons were designed by actual people unlike in Oblivion, because instead it's the quests that feel like they were made by robots. Maybe I'm being too harsh here, but I don't think so. So I want to hear your opinion on this topic. What do you like better about Oblivion than Skyrim? Or is there something you like better in Skyrim than Oblivion? Perhaps you disagree with me on one of these, or all of them. These are the kind of things I'm really interested in hearing about. Also, make sure to hit that subscribe button while you're at it. And don't forget to check out my other videos. I have one on the five biggest jerks in Oblivion, and another on the five biggest jerks in Skyrim. So whatever game you prefer, there is a jerk for you to get angry at.